Oh, first up. I want to say happy 70th birthday to my mama. She is my favorite girl. And I have worked her nerves these last couple of weeks. We threw her a great celebration this week, and her family is here. All my uncles and cousins from out of town over on that side, and we had us a good time, and we're so glad about it. But one thing about my mama I want y'all to know is that my mama is a praying woman. I am the fruit of her prayers. I am before you today because she prayed. Because I'm going to tell you, it was real rough in the beginning. But she prayed for me. She loved me, and she prayed for me. How many of y'all in here is the benefit of my mama's prayers? Let me see you. Yeah, uh-huh. All of you really are. You just don't know it. The fact that we still here is because my mama prayed. But I remember I used to couldn't stand her praying when I was little. I mean, we used to have to pray on the way to school. And then she had to make, me, make us hold hands in the car and pray. Now, it's like 6 o'clock in the morning. And she praying, and I was always wondering, she can't be closing her eyes and driving at the same time. So while she was praying, I was like, Lord, please don't let us die in this car this morning. But honey, she was praying, and if you found her late at night, she was praying. Even till now, I could run downstairs in the morning and tell her something. She in the shower, I think she on the phone. No, she talking to Jesus. She talked to Jesus like she talked to anybody else. There's something about a praying mother. Honey, because it was rough. But there is something about when you have real relationship with God that you can go on others' behalf. You don't worry. I can guarantee you she don't ever pray for herself. She is always praying for someone else. So happy birthday, happy 70th birthday. Don't she look good to be 70? Happy 70th birthday to my mama. And I'm going to stop getting on her nerves on today. So we're in this series, series, a season of prayer. I'm not going to be before you long. But we've been talking about the importance of prayer because we understand that prayer is our communication and connection to God. So what is a relationship without communication and connection? No natural relationship you have do you not communicate. And if you don't communicate, you're not going to have it long. I remember, you know, when you first, you know, get into a relationship, you're all giddy, you're talking. I don't know what they do nowadays. I don't even talk about what we did back in the day. You're on the phone. No, you fall asleep. No, you fall asleep. No, you fall asleep. <laughs> you, you got that butterfly feeling. You're talking all day, all the time. You want to snap, you want to text, whatever you want to do all day long. Constant communication with the one you love. But it's amazing how we can say that we have relationship with God, but we don't talk to him. And there's a lot of reasons we don't, but the one thing Papa Joe said today in, in communion was we have VIP access. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, you don't have to have somebody go before you or go on your behalf. Now, it's interesting, in the Old Testament, only the priests could go. And they would wear the bells on the bottom of their robes, and they would go in with the sin offering. And if you, the reason they put the bells on so they could know they still were living because if they wasn't right and they went behind the bell, they would drop dead in the church. Oh, God, if we put that back in place. <laughs> but I had to wait to get to a priest to go before God on my behalf. I don't have that kind of time. Amen. But because Jesus died, he, he repaired the breach back to the Father. Now I have all access. I can go before him boldly. I can stand right before him. And it don't mean I have it all right. It just means he's gave, given me the opportunity to get it all right. And then Papa Joe last week came and taught us the prayer model, which is out of Matthew. Remember, he said praise. First of all, before you go ask him for anything, you should at least thank him for what he's already done. You know how your kids do. My kids ain't got good at it. 
They, they butter you up real quick, but I already know that first text that say, Ma, how you doing today? I already know. <laughs> you don't ever care how I'm doing no other day, but on today, I already know. Can you cash at me? Can you Apple pay me? Can you? But at least if we're going to go to the Father, we must first thank him for what he's done. And then the R represented repentant, repentance. Remember, the our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and, and forgive us our trespasses or our debts, but not only repent, but you got to repent and forgive. You can't go to the Father asking for forgiveness that you haven't granted. And then we wonder why our prayers are not heard. Because you don't have the right. Your access has been revoked if you don't forgive. That's a whole nother series. Like, I could just pivot right there and teach probably like 10 weeks on forgiveness but we ain't got that kind of time. So you go from repentance, not only of our sins, but that we forgive one another. And then you move to the ask, and I like Papa Joe added, ask and wait. Because the problem in our prayer is, once we stop talking, we never give God the chance to talk. That's where our amen comes in and we walk away. And he's sitting there like, I thought we were having a conversation. You have to ask, and then wait. And then, no matter what the answer is from the ask, we must yield. Not my will, but your will be done. And so today, I just want to kind of talk about how you are to be persistent in your prayers. The scripture says in John 14, 15, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. That's why when you hear people pray at the end, they say, in the name of Jesus. Why? Because he's the ultimate access. It's like putting a seal on it so it goes to where it's going. It's the stamp. You can drop your envelope off in the mailbox all day. But if you don't have a stamp, now what's amazing about that is they'll send it back to you though. You would think it would take the same amount of time and the same amount of money to send it where it was going. No, you don't have that kind of access. It is going to be returned to sender. The name of Jesus is the stamp to make sure my mail gets to the heavenly gates. Papa Joe said last week, if you ain't forgiven, then it just hit the ceiling. I wonder if we can see in our natural eyes how many prayers is stuck up in the ceiling in here. Not your prayer, not your prayer, not yours, not Charles. But he says, if you ask in my name, whatever it is, I will do it because you have the stamp. However, Jesus invites us to pray to the Father according to his name and to expect to receive. But his name can be used like a magic trick. You can't, it's not like abracadabra. You can't just put his name on anything. But yet at times, our prayers go unanswered. Anybody had a prayer that seemed to go unanswered? Y'all had to tell me the truth up in here. That was rhetorical. Just nod your head. Just nod your head. And it's like, what, is God not hearing me? What is happening that my prayer hasn't been answered. Well, there's a few things. I'm not going to say they all of them, but I'll give you a few clues of why your prayer has not been answered. Because the thing is, they taught us when we were coming up in church that you couldn't question God. They told us you couldn't ask why. But that's a lie. He's a big enough God to handle your question. I'm going to tell you something else. You can be mad at him and go tell him, and he's big enough to handle that too. God, I am mad at you because I don't understand any of this is not going the way I planned it. He's not this weak, feeble God that his feelings is going to get hurt or his ego will be hurt. You can go before him. You can ask him anything that you want to know. Now be ready for the answer. So let's, God, why are some of my prayers not being answered. Number one is because some of them are selfish. 
Some prayers are selfish and not in alignment with the nature and character of Jesus. Lord, let me hit the mega million. <laughs> I may be guilty on that one. I might be. But why would he give you a mega million when you can't steward a mega hundred? He is a just God, isn't he? That's like with your children. You understand what they can handle and what they can't handle. And when they show you what they can't, they lose those privileges. Well, that's how they used to parent. I don't know what's happening today. I'm not going to give you something that's going to destroy you. Lord, let him be the one. Not, Lord, give me the one you have for me. No, let him be the one. And you don't even know the other side of him. And as a matter of fact, it might be three of them. Here's a hint for the singles. You need to walk with somebody in every season of their life before you make a decision. Good, bad, indifferent. I need to know how you act when you're mad. I need to know how you act when you're sad. I need to know how you act when, when everything is great, when it's not great. And then I need to know how you treat your mama. Selfish prayers. God, let this, happen, let this happen for me. You're not qualified. Lord, give me this house. You can't pay your rent. Come on, church. And that's not a, I'm not, this is not a bad thing. I'm not saying it bad. He loves us enough not to give us things that are going to cause us more harm or hurt. He's not withholding it for you to punish you. He's withholding it to bless you so you can learn and grow to that place. You're not ready. You're not ready. You're not ready. I remember when I got my first house. I didn't even know what home ownership really was and all the stuff that take with it. Now I don't care how much they approve me for it, how much is it going to cost for me to maintain this, like clean it? See, you think about that when you mature. See, you learn in your prayers, and your prayers change as you mature. So a selfish prayer in the hands of Jesus, if you allow the Holy Spirit to change your heart, you will change your prayer. He won't change the answer. Come on, church. Number two, move on, Pastor, move on. Sound like I'm hollering at you. I'm not, I'm not. I'm just passionate about what I'm saying. Number two, demonic op op opposition. What does that mean? There's some things that were prayed, and it's being held up, but it's being held up by the forces of this air. Satan is the prince of the air. It's the scripture in Daniel. Daniel had been praying before God. He was an upright man. He was right. He was right in the, side, in the eyes of God, and he was praying for the land and for certain things to happen. But it just wasn't happening. So the scripture says in Daniel 10, 12, Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Meaning from the moment you prayed, I heard you. But it was the principalities of the air that was trying to delay the answer. The answer was already given. And he said something like this, but we had to send forth Michael. Oh, you don't know who Michael is. I mean, I got a cousin named Michael, a brother named Michael. I'm talking about the angel Michael, who is the warfare angel that comes and fights on your behalf that your answer is released. That may be a little deep for a Sunday morning, but that was for my meat eaters. It's not that he didn't hear you. It's not that he didn't answer you. You just got to stay steadfast and wait for Michael to fight on your behalf so that your answers can come. See, my mama prayed a long time ago that I would be here. Now, it probably took about 30 years, but yet it was delayed but not denied. Tell somebody, delayed. Delayed but not denied. Here's number three. Come on, let's start the music. We ready. Number three is your prayer's not being answered because of the resistance of our flesh. Listen. God does not merely override people's will to answer prayer. 
I'm, I'm going to say it one more time. He does not override people's will to answer our prayer. A lot of mothers are praying for prodigals and, and wayward children and wondering why it's taking so long. He cannot override. He can, but he will not override their will. So he has to work his will into their will. The kingdom of God is not ruled by a dictator. Satan is the only one who manipulates and deceives people. God is not in the deception business. We are to, pers we are to persevere in prayer for God's influence in people's lives because God works gradually rather than by force or control. Now I'm trying to figure that out because in church there was a whole lot of manipulation, force, and control. Well, that teaches us that that ain't God. Should no leader force you to do anything, to control you to do anything? If God gave us free will, then no one has the power to take it away. Your prayer is not being answered because the flesh is resisted. And sometimes it's your flesh that's being resisted. You praying the wrong thing. God get her, but it's you. Lord, I need you to straighten out my wife. Your wife is fine. It's you. But again, if we let the Holy Spirit move in our lives, he will change our prayer. It says something like he'll make intercession. Oh, we'll get to that in a couple weeks. I'm about ready. Number four, sometimes your prayer ain't answered just for divine reasons. He's God. God's timing to answer some prayers has not yet come. You can be praying for something, and it's not time yet. God, send me a mate, send me a mate, send me a mate. It's not time. There is still work that needs to be done in you. God, give me this job. Give me, I want to be this job. And get me this promotion. It's not, it's not time because I'm a loving God. You're not ready. You still got to learn how to deal with people and fix that nasty attitude. Or God, bring them, bring them back home. No, they're, they're working on an experience that's going to make the most important impact on what they believe. And when they come back this time, they're not going to leave no more. It's just not time or he has something better I am so glad I need to send out thank you cards that that one relationship that I thought was the one I'm telling you I need to send out a thank you card I'm going to go home and write it thank you for doing me wrong Thank you for cheating on me. Thank you for all that you caused because if God would have answered that prayer, I wouldn't have the blessing that I have on today. <laughs> Honey, he wasn't even that cute. <laughs> Sometimes we think we know best and we pray according to our flesh and what we want. And God loves us enough to say, baby, I got something better for you. Honey, and 24 years later, God is still good. And he's fine too. <laughs> Listen, it's not that God doesn't hear your prayer. He's working on your behalf. He 
he loves us enough not to just give us whatever we ask for. You know when you're parenting kids and them spoiled kids, I know I got some. And you just give them everything, they don't appreciate nothing. You give them everything they want, they don't value it. You buy two and three hundred dollar jogging suits and they land on the floor when you come in their room. Hallelujah. I, I know, Nick, I'm with you. But because they don't know any different, they don't understand the value. They don't appreciate. When you got a God like God, he going to tell you, no, stop or wait. And don't care about your fit or your tantrum. Because he loves you enough to only give what's best for you. This last scripture says this, and we're done. Luke 18, 1, he said, And Jesus spoke a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to give up. You should always pray. Even when the answer is not coming, you continue to pray, but your prayer changes. You know what it, prays, it changes to? You may say your prayer starts up, Lord, I need you just to bless me with new shoes. Let's just use that. I like shoes a lot. Lord, Lord, I need you to bless me with new shoes. All right? Well, when I come again, I say, Lord, I need you to remember new shoes. Then later on, my Marissa, the prayer changed to something like, Lord, I thank you for new shoes. Now, new shoes ain't showed up yet, but because I believe when I pray, and I've already made my request known, and I'm right before him. I'm not selfish. I, I prayed in faith, and I did the right thing. So now, God, I thank you for my family being saved. I thank you for my family being reconciled. I thank you for my marriage being fruitful. I thank you. See, once I made my request known, now I just keep thanking him until it shows up. And honey, won't he will, will he, won't he? Your prayers will be answered. Don't stop praying. The old folks used to sing a song, not the old folks. The mothers used to sing a song. Saints, don't stop praying, for the Lord is nigh. Saints, don't stop praying, for he will hear your cry. For the Lord has promised, and his word is true. Saints, don't stop praying. He will answer you. I've seen it with my own life. I've seen it. He keeps every promise. He keeps every promise. And I've never been seen forsaken. With my own eyes. Think I've about seen your life right now. Life. He, he never keeps every promise. Fails. I've never been If you forsaken. don't see it, he's seen got something better for you. He's working it on your behalf. Don't faint. Don't stop praying. Keep praying. Keep in communication. Pray always. And I guarantee you, he will do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or Lord God, we lift up everyone under the sound of my voice this morning. All those that are tuning in at home, give us a praying spirit. Nudge us to remind us not to stop praying. You answer the smallest things and you answer the largest things. There is nothing impossible with you. God, have your way in our lives. Take our prayer life to the next level. 
reintroduce yourself to us. Show yourself strong. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on and give the Lord a shout of praise today.